Good afternoon everyone. Welcome to the Lord Reigns in All Nations. Welcome to our Friday service. We are so glad that you are here with us celebrating your Friday, your weekend. Amen. So I believe that we have listeners all across the globe today joining with us as we are excited to hear from the Lord. So to all of you, wherever you may be sitting at right now, we want to welcome you. Um, for those who are still, it's morning time there in your in your place. Good morning. To those who are already in, in night time right now in your place, we want to tell you good evening. And to those who are having the same timeline with us, good afternoon, everyone. So once again, we are so excited because we know that God will always do something, something great in our lives. So He will always reveal Himself to us the moment that we have this heart who really is just wanting to seek Him. So may it be this afternoon, we'll have a heart that is always willing and open to receive from the Lord so that we will not be, we will not be missing out on what the Lord has prepared for us. So quickly, just before we get into the Word, let me invite you to please pray with me. Let's close our eyes as we pray. Thank you, Father, for gathering us once more, Lord God, with this in this place, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for using technology, Lord God, to unite us, Lord. Even thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to, to come to church as a family, even though we're far from each other, God. Thank you, Lord God, because right now we are in one accord. And that's what you have said, Lord God. But when we are in one accord, your Holy Spirit will just dwell, Lord. Your Holy Spirit will just begin, Lord Jesus, to really empower, to speak. And that's what we're asking for today, God. Holy Spirit, may you speak to us. Holy Spirit, may you open our minds, may you open our hearts, so that we can receive the fullness of the things that we have prepared for your children. God, I pray, Lord, that we will not miss out on what you have prepared for us, God. I pray for your anointing to cover me. Let your voice be heard, not mine. Let your glory be revealed, not mine, Lord. Let your words be taught and not mine, in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray may you bless, Lord, every household, Lord, who is streaming to us today. May you bless them, Lord. May you, Lord, hold them in your mighty hand. Father, we entrust everything to you, Lord God. We honor you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So before we get into our word, I want to share a story to you. Um, there was this woman who was, who she was at the prime of her in of her life. She was in the mid, she was in the mid, middle age of her life. So she's married, she has kids, she has a job. But then there came a time when she was she was fi- facing a crisis in life. Her marriage was not working well. Her children, she's, they're not growing up in the way that, that she expected to be, them to be. Her job, I mean, everything is falling apart. So what she did, she went to her mom just to, to open up her heart so that she can just release her frustration. So he, she told her mom everything. And her mom didn't say anything at all. But rather what her mom did, she took her to the kitchen. She took she took three cooking um, pots, bowls, if you would want. She put water in them, and then all together, placed the three cooking pots on the stove. On the first cooking pot, she put carrots. On the next, she put eggs. On the other, she put um, coffee. She waited until 20 minutes without saying anything. After 20 minutes, the mother of that, of that lady got everything and asked her daughter, she told her, Can you just look at this? Can you tell me what, 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 what can you observe? So she said, well, well, the carrots, it's now so soft. And her mother said, yeah, that's a good observation. How about the egg? What, what happened to the egg? She said, now the egg is so tough, it's, it's hard, it's so firm, it's hard boiled even. And she said, now what happened to the coffee? Well, well, the coffee released its flavor. And her mom began to tell her things like, they were the egg, the carrots, the coffee. They were all in the same water, but they responded differently. How do we respond to adversities? How do we respond to setbacks? How do we respond when we're in the hot waters? Are we like 
the carrot that seems so so strong because the carrots if you notice it's red but what did the water what did the hot water do to that carrots it made it so soft it made it quote unquote weak are you that kind of person that in the in the face of adversity you tend to become weak you, you tend to just give up and quit or maybe you are like the egg the egg gets fluid inside right but then it when it began to be placed in the hot water the hot water affected the egg so much that the, the fluid is inside it the yolk that's inside it started to become so what do you call this tough it became now so 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 firm what does it what does it what does it tell us are you the kind of person that after facing adversities facing setbacks you become tough not in a good way you become negative you become so bitter you become so hard like you become so numb or maybe just maybe some of us also are like the coffee bean the coffee bean actually changed the water because when the cup and the coffee bean was put in that in that boiling water it released its flavor it released its aroma that it didn't allow it used that that something that hurt that bean to bring out the best out of that bean are you are you that kind of person do you handle adversity in that way now let me ask you are you more of the carrot or the egg or the coffee bean today we shall learn how it's like to be resilient so we're entitling right now our message resilience overcoming setbacks amen so we're talking about resilience right now we're talking about uh, how, how do you define resilience we're talking about tenacity amen this is your capacity to come back strong after an adversity so we shall be right now learning how how do we define resilience amen so here let me just show you it says here resilience is the quality of being able to adapt to stressful life changes and bouncing back from hardship well amen resilience is the character that no matter what's happening inside of you or outside of you what's happening around you you have this power to adapt just like the coffee bean you don't allow the hot waters of life to weaken you or to make you become numb but rather you use those 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 situations you use those adversity so that you can be a better person friends that is what we call resilience or or tenacity if you would notice um a basketball no the rubbers the rubber if you would if they have this capacity to bounce back that according to the strength of how hard you 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 press the ball down that's also how how strong the comeback is so that's that's resilience the power to come back the power to the power to adapt with your with, with stress so what are the other what are the other ways and how we would define resilience so we would also be seeing here resilience is a response to tragedy crisis or other life altering changes that allows us to move on despite the loss wow like you are this person that you don't dwell in the past you are this person that you have the heart to to, to just move on that's resilience how how good are you in moving on are you not having emotional baggage are you not burdened with things from the past resilience is the ability to move on i'm not saying it's easy moving on is difficult but resilience will give you that heart to just cope up and move on amen and also some would say resilience is the human heart's ability to suffer greatly and take note and grow from it he does not see failure pain as something that would stop him but he sees that in a way that pain those those 
hurts those frustrations they will push me to grow that that's that is the character of a person who is truly resilient so because if you would see resilience we would see people every day suffering different ordeals in life some are suffering an end in the relationship some are suffering a sickness some are suffering job loss of job but if you are resilient problems may be all around you but you have this capacity that this is an opportunity to grow. That's a mindset of a resilient person. So if you are sitting next to someone, can you just ask that person, are you resilient? Are you growing from your pains? Are you growing from your from your frustrations? Amen. In Tagalog, resilience is about pagiging matibay. Pagiging matatag. Let me just say this in Tagalog. Ulanin ka man ng problema, Ulanin ka man ng kahit anong kahirapan sa buhay. Pero tumatayo ka eh because you are resilient. So every time you say resilience, it's all about, once again, pagiging matibay, pagiging matatag. Amen? So that's that's what resilience is, friends. I want to, to discuss on that topic because we all go through stress. We all go through different difficult situations. We all go through difficult times. But God wants us to bounce back. God wants us to have that heart, that tenacity, that resilience. That the enemy may throw anything to you. But you have that heart to stand up. Because I will grow from my pains. I will grow from my from my hurts. Amen. So now, now we want to see what is what is the Bible telling us about resilience? Because it's also important and it's very, very important to allow the word of the Lord to minister to us. Amen. So right now we will get to see here in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 to 15. This is what the Bible says about resilience. It says here, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead i press toward the goal for the price of the upward call of god in christ jesus let those of us who are mature think this way and if in anything you think otherwise god will reveal also that also to you so so paul is telling us here that if you want to succeed if you want to break through there, there are things that you have to do Mm. You have to forget what lies behind. I would understand. Some of us went through a difficult time in the past. Maybe you've been hurt so bad. Maybe you've been frustrated so bad. Maybe you've been disappointed so badly. But then what is Paul telling us? Forget what lies behind. What's done is done. It's already done. It's already behind. Don't be a prisoner of your past. If before... It, pain has already taken its toll on you don't allow it to 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 steal even the joy that you have today that's what paul is saying for you to bounce back forget what lies behind and that would include forgiving people you know what true forgiveness is giving the forgiveness to someone without even that someone asking for an apology that's forgiveness. That's moving on. That's resilience. Amen. And he further goes to say, you have to forget what lies behind. And then you have to strain forward to what lies ahead. Your focus should be on what lies ahead and what can still happen, not on what already happened. My focus will be what can I do more rather than on what happened before. I mean, don't collect antiques. Maybe you uh, you have a collection, a collection of pain, a collection of frustrations. Hey, it's time to let go. Can you tell yourself right now, if you are that person who's still hanging on to all these things, it's time to let go. It's time to declutter. You have to do a decluttering. Amen. It also says here, I press on towards the goal. For the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, let those of us take note who are mature. Well, what do you want to say? One sign of maturity is the ability to think this way. Maturity is never about your, your physical age. Maturity is your ability to be resilient. 
if you are truly mature, that's what Paul is saying here. Mature people think this way. They forget what lies behind. They think of what's ahead. If you are that person right now, maybe not in the young age anymore, but you're still holding on to those, to those what lie behind. Hey, it's time to grow up right now. It's time to be mature. Don't hold, hold on to grudges anymore because that's holding you down and that's making things heavier for you. Amen? Paul is saying, forget what lies behind. Move forward. Look forward. And he says, this is how mature people think. And if you don't think that way, Paul began to say also, well, God will reveal that to you. There are some people that because we don't have that deep intimacy with the Lord, we don't get to understand these things. You know what's great about the Lord, my friends? Is that the more you get closer to God, the more you would understand His, His thoughts, the more you would understand the way He thinks, which is so different from the world. So may it be today that you are that person who would be resilient who would choose to move forward from the past who would say i will look for, i will look forward and not behind so because if you are that person who you think yeah, but i don't think that way pastor paul said well god will reveal that to you but how can god reveal something to you if your thoughts cannot focus on him i i've come to realize this when you have so many options, you, can, you cannot really focus. You cannot really enjoy. Think of a buffet. If there is a buffet, you don't know what food you'd, you'd get, right? You want this, you want this, you want that. But you don't really enjoy that food because you want to try everything. So think about you have only one food. You get to enjoy it. What am I trying to point out? Focus on God. So that you would really be able to taste and see how good the Lord is. So that He can reveal things to you. Amen. So what, do, what are the other things that the Bible tells us? First, it says to, for, for us to be resilient, we have to forget what lies behind. Also, the word of the Lord tells us here, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That is what is said in Romans chapter 12, verse 21. A resilient person is an overcomer. He does not allow situation to overcome him. He overcomes situation. He does not allow problem to, to, to control him. He controls the problem. That should be our mindset. Do not be overcome, but rather overcome. Amen? Because whatever you don't overcome will end up overcoming you. Whatever you don't conquer will end up conquering you. A resilient person, just like the coffee bean. A resilient person put that person in a tough situation he comes out stronger amen so what are the other things that the Bible is telling us about the about resilience amen we can also read from here let me just show you quickly in James chapter 1 verse 12 wow it says blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial for when he has stood the test he will receive the crown of life which god has promised to those who love him this is about resilience this is about steadfastness what is steadfast the ability to stand firm no matter how difficult things may be if you want to receive the crown of life then you have to be steadfast and steadfastness can only be tested under trial. So the moment you would say, I don't want to be tested, I don't want to be going through trials to, to trying times, you're just also saying, I don't want the crown of life. A resilient person thinks in a different way, friends. A resilient person has a mental toughness that nothing can stop him nothing can move him because he remains steadfast can i get an amen for that amen so also let me show you this this is a very wonderful description about a reminder of what steadfastness is this will be our main verse that we would like to dwell on to so it says here 
in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. Though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. But the wicked stumble when but the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. Amen. Allow that to sink in for, for a moment. It says here, though the righteous fall. When I was reading this, when I was meditating on this, I realized even the righteous fall. Your righteousness is not a guarantee that you will not fall. Don't mistake this for falling into sin. That's a different story. What do we mean in the context of falling? That no matter how strong you may be, there will always be situations that will put you down on your knees. There will be situations that will knock you down. There will just be crisis in life that will just knock you down. No matter how strong you think you may be, we all have different ways of, of being attacked. But there's just one thing that I've come to realize. All those who run at one point or more, they would fall. Only those who don't run, don't fall. So if you're running in a race, if you're running in, in your Christian life, you know what? There will be times that you will fall. Again, not into sin. But there will just be situations that will just be so big. But then what God is telling us here, though the righteous fall seven times, take note, not just once. Don't get disappointed. Are you falling right now? Are you failing? Even here, the word of the Lord says that even they, even they fall seven times, the good thing is they rise again. Amen? I remember the song which says even the best fall down sometimes. But those who are resilient, those righteous people, they rise again. Amen? Because you know what? We have different attacks. You may be attacked right now in a different way than your than the other person is being attacked but it's a fact it's a fact of life that indeed we are all being attacked let's read this it says in psalms chapter 55 verse 18 i am attacked from all sides but you will rescue me unharmed by the battle are you feeling attacked right now are your finances being attacked is your spiritual life being attacked? Is your marriage being attacked? Find assurance in the word of the Lord when he told us that I am attacked from all sides, but the Lord will rescue me. The Lord will rescue you. If I can just go back to that verse which says, if I can just go back, let me just show you this verse once more. That even though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. But the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. Now, this tells us one thing. That the defining characteristic of a righteous person is the ability to rise again. It's that ability to stand up no matter how hard the fall may be. A righteous will stand. But the wicked will just stumble down and will remain there. So... Are you righteous or are you wicked? Because if you are righteous, you will rise again. But if you are wicked, you will just remain enjoying your pity party. You will just remain stumbled, stumbled and start to blame others. My friend, this is a time that we need to be resilient. Tell yourself, self, be resilient. Amen. Are you learning? So also, let me just show to you this verse that I have read. It says here, The difference between average people and achieving people is their perception of and response to failure. That's what John Maxwell said. Are you an average person or are you an achiever? You know what differentiates them? Their perception and their response to failure. If you're that someone who, who's like a crybaby every time you fail, then you're average. 
But if you're that someone, I'm not telling you, you're not hurt. Yes, you, you get hurt. But if you have that heart to stand up and say, let's try again. Let's try again. And that's resilience, my friends. Amen. Also, let me read to you this um, verse, uh, this, this quote that I've, I've read. Let me just show this to you right now. It says here, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. And when the tough paw falls, he bounces back. That's according to Joseph P. Kennedy. Bounce back. Has, has the enemy been pushing you down? Bounce back. Is the going getting tough right now? Is the situation that you are in getting so tough? You know what? When the tough falls, he bounces back. Tell the person next to you, stand up, bounce back. Don't, don't remain in your pity party. Stand up. You are resilient. Because, because Jesus is in you. You can stand up. Amen. Once again, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. And when the top falls, he bounces back. You will not see, you will not see um, a resilient person crying over spilled milk, crying over failures and disappointments. He will not waste time for that. Because for him, he has to stand up once more. He has to overcome setbacks. Because a resilient person sees set, setbacks as a comeback. A resilient person sees obstacles as opportunities. That's a very important thing. Your perception. How do you perceive things, my friends? How do you see trials? How do you see tests? How do you see problems? Do you see them as something that would that would slow you down? Well, let me remind you of these words coming from coming from coming from the book of James, chapter one, verses two to four. Oh, he says here, my friends, take note. Be glad. Even if you have a lot of trouble, you know that you learn to endure by having your faith tested. But you must learn to endure everything so that you will be completely mature and not lacking in anything. Amen? Well, this is one thing, one way of seeing things. That when you have a lot of trouble, your reaction should be be glad. But there are people when, when they're facing troubles, it's just so obvious. Their face would just go from this to this. Their energy would just be from this to this. But remember, the word of the Lord should be the final word in our life. And the word of the Lord is telling us, if you have a lot of trouble, not just some, if you have a lot of troubles, be glad. Amen? Because these challenges, they test the quality of our faith. They, see, they, they, they make us see, am I really growing in my faith? Or am I just good when I hear things but not really able to apply them? You know what? You're joining services. You're joining prayer meetings. You're joining Bible studies. You're doing that not just for nothing. You're doing that so that when you are faced with too much trouble, God will be able to remind you of the things that you should do. And in James, it reminds us, if you have a lot of trouble, be glad. Well, Pastor, that seems tough. Yeah. It's not easy. Day comes, rental comes, but the salary <laughs> never comes. The rather than being sad, in the book of James, it just tells us that we have to be glad. Why? Because it will make us completely mature. It makes you grow from one level to the next. That is why you, you wouldn't wonder. There are Christians, they have been Christians for so long, but until now, they're still baby Christians. They've been going to church for years, but now they're still baby Christians. How do we know? In the way that how they, how they deal with their problems, in the way how they deal with their, with their adversities, they still get defeated rather than being glad. So why not? Ask you, ask you, ask the person next to you, do you have problems? What should you do? Be glad. Amen? Be glad. 
because that's the power of perspective friends how you see things matters so much let me i have i have read this from facebook i just want to and i, I and it made me think of things question i will give you like five seconds to answer okay how many stars are there in the philippine flag five four three two one hold your answer ask the person next to you what's your answer well if your answer is three well we're correct because since since the beginning we have been taught that there are three stars in the philippine flag but some would answer four because science also tells us that the sun is a star so if i'm asked how many stars are in the philippine flag i can say it's four well well you're also right but some would also say but pastor there are six why six because the flag has two sides right this side and this side when you look at them so there's three here and there's three here yeah it's six you're correct that's why there's eight because again the sun is a star so i can say that if there are two sides and there should be like eight stars well you're correct well some others would also say pastor there could be a lot because your question was how many stars are there in the philippine flag but then in the philippines we have different we have many flags so i cannot count you're also correct so pastor what, what are you trying to say what i'm trying to say is how you see things matter it may be different from what how others see it but let me tell you this it's right so when you're saying that when you're looking at problems and it's difficult, well, it's right because you're looking at it from the perspective that it's difficult. Because you know what? You're looking at it on a perspective that when you're looking at your ability, you're right. When you say it's impossible, well, yeah, you're right. Because you're looking at it again from, from the perspective of someone who will trust on his own rather than trusting God. But if you would also say, Pastor, it's easy because God is with me. Well, you are right. So what am I trying to say? How do you see things? How do you see your situations? How do you see tests? Because in James, it says there, be glad. Because this is, I'm looking at it, that this is an opportunity for me to go. You're right. But to those who would say, but, but I cannot do this. Because it's difficult. You're also right. You have to choose your perspective. And let me encourage you to look at it and how God sees it. Remember, others said Lazarus was dead, though they're right. But Jesus also said, He's just sleeping. Jesus is also right. Because those people who said Lazarus is dead, they're looking at what's there. But when Jesus said that Lazarus was sleeping, because he was looking at it based on what he can do. What can God do in the problem that you have right now? Are you still going to say it's difficult? Is there anything too difficult for the Lord? Change your perspective. Look at it from the way God sees it. That's why be glad. Let me also show you one thing here about the power of perspective. Failure is not the opposite of success. It's part of success. Wow. If you see failure as the opposite of success, every time you fail, you're thinking like you're going far, far and far from success. But when you look at this this way, no. Because I failed, I'm becoming better. Because I failed, I'm becoming stronger and that's pushing me nearer nearer and nearer to the success that's waiting for me that's how we should think again failure is not the opposite of success it's part of success amen and we will also be able to read in the bible who are these people who are an example of resilience now, there are many but let me name two 
first would be Paul. After his life-changing encounter with Jesus, after he decided, after becoming the person that God wanted him to be, not everyone was happy. He, he received persecutions. He received attacks. He received threats. He was beaten, stoned, criticized, jailed, even had multiple near-death experiences. Can you imagine that? Have you been in that situation like Paul, that you have this multiple near-death experience, not just one? This is how tough life was for Paul. So we can also read that from here. Let me just show you quickly. And on the account of what happened to Paul, they go to this in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 to 25. It says there, Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the forty lashes less one. Three times I was bitten with, beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea. Imagine that. How, 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 how difficult were those situations that Paul went through? But let's see, as we read on further, it says also here, On frequent journeys, in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardships, through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure. Wow. Kaya mo yun. Amen. If you can just imagine the ordeals that Paul had to go through. He was enumerating it not because he was ranting. But to show how, how, how resilient he is, not because he's strong. But because he knows what he was fighting for and, and and the cause is so much worth it that giving up was not in the vocabulary of Paul amen quitting was not in the vocabulary of Paul because he's resilient may that be also for you and for me that the word quit is not it's not it's not present in our vocabulary amen but there's also one a very significant event that happened in the life of Paul. If you can read here. But Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, and having persuaded the crowds, once again, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. Wow. How hard was the stoning? <laughs> to the point that they thought he was dead. But then this is a very wonderful turnaround. In verse 20, but when the disciples gathered about him, he rose up. Can you just imagine that? I mean, the stoning that he received, I could say it was not a simple stoning. Because even those who stoned him left him, he was saying, he's dead. But what did Paul do? He rose up. It just seems what parang wala lang nangyari. Tumayo ulit. Wow, and enter the city, and then the next day he went with, he went with, he went on with Barnabas to build. Amen. I mean, can you can you imagine that? That resilience. He has no time for a pity party. He has no time to cry and blame God. Lord, what kind of God are you? I'm serving you, and then you're still letting me go through this. You know what he did? After he was stoned, maybe. He was just dusting off the, the dirt and said, Come on, let's do this. Wow. Are you that, that kind of person that you are already being stoned by problems? But rather than quitting and giving up, you would just stand up and say, Okay, come on, let's do this. You lost a job. But even though you lost a job, Lord, you lost a job. Your, your 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 partner left you. Your girlfriend and boyfriend mo pa nagdasal mo at pag pinagfasting mo sa Panginoon, iniwan ka para sa iba. Pero, you, Lord, okay lang, andyan ka naman eh. Ikaw lang, sapat na. That, that's resilience. 
A resilient person will not allow any adversities in life, any difficulties in life to change his, his, his perspective of the Lord. Amen? So, also, if we could remember one, one person also went through too much. It's in the Old Testament, it's Job. Amen? He would see like everything was taken from him already. You know how it feels like no more land, diba? Everything was taken from him. His wealth, his health, his, uh, his family that he holds dear, his children. In his nap, sunod sunod, hindi natapos. Have you been in that situation? We're in one situation which has come after the next. You know what Job did? It says here in this verse. In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. Power of resilience. Hindi po siya nag-emote mga kapanin. Hindi po siya nag-post sa Facebook, hashtag feeling sad. Hindi po siya nag-sabi. Hindi po siya nag -rant. Because he was holding on that God is still good. Situation may not be good, but God is still good. Your, your, your situation will not affect how, how you love God and how you see God. That should be the power of resilience. Amen? But even to the point, mga kapatid, that his, even his wife was already taunting him. We can see how his wife reacted. Then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Praise God and die. Wow. But did Job do that? No. Because he was resilient. Job would not even consider such a thing despite his suffering. Job knew that God was in control. Please note that God is still in control. I may not know what you're going through right now, but God is in control. And when God is in control, nothing can go wrong. Remember the storm? The boat didn't sink because Jesus was, Jesus was there. Jesus is on board. The boat can sink. Amen. So, we should also be resilient, brethren. It says here, no? We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. You may be going through too much, but a resilient person continues to stand up no matter how painful the situations may have been. Because God is still with me. Because God is still in control. Christians should keep on bouncing back. Amen. Tell the person next to you, bounce back. It says here in Psalms 27, 33 to 34, it says here, 23 to 24. Um, the Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. There may be situations wherein you will stumble, but the promise of the Lord is that I will uphold you. You will not remain defeated because a resilient person bounces back because God is with us. So let me close with, how do we become resilient? So here are the things that we can keep in mind how to be resilient. So first, it says here, be a builder, not a storm chaser. Ask the person next to you, are you a builder or a storm chaser? Amen. So we can we can use this as our reference. It says here in this, in this verse in Matthew 7, 24-25, Anyone who hears and obeys these teachings of mine is like a wise person who built a house on solid rock. Rain poured down, rivers flooded, and winds beat against that house. But it did not fall because it was built on solid rock. And also on the next slide it says here, Anyone who hears my teachings and doesn't obey them is like a foolish person who builds a house on sand. The rain poured down, the rivers flooded, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Finally, it fell with a crash. Amen. So what do we want to see here? 
in the context of Matthew, uh, in the context of Matthew seven, we are defined as storm chaser, as someone who simply reacts, who simply lives in constant reaction to a storm. A builder, on the other hand, is someone who tries to get ahead of the storm. I would always remember what my manager is telling me: you should always be one step ahead of the problem. Because sometimes, or most of the time, we are just reacting to problems. Rather than leading, we just react. When things happen, we react. But it should be a resilient person. He, he will not be allowed to be, to be driven by the problems. He drives the problems. Amen? So how do we know what's the difference between a storm chaser and a builder? The storm chaser as the weak one and the builder who is the resilient person. So we can... We can know that based on this. Let me show you here. Storm chasers, they focus on emotions, circumstances. They focus on people. They focus on reaction. What do I mean? A storm, you would know that you're a storm chaser when you are too focused on your emotions. Difficult things happen, you become too emotional. It's not, it's not wrong to cry. Especially when you're crying out to the Lord. But the storm chasers, they're just too emotional that they react immediately. And they just hear something, they react immediately. They are all focused on circumstances. Like their, their reaction would be, how do I make my life as smooth as possible? That's their goal. They focus on people. How do I make sure people like me? They're people pleaser. That's why they would always do everything just to please people. That's a storm chaser. And they react. Reaction is different from response. Are you reacting? Are you responding? Let me just read something here. Reaction, they are instinctual. They're instincts. Amen? There's no filtering process when you react in a situation. It's running on autopilot. Amen? Like, it's 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 that it's that what, what do you call this? It's that immediate response. Nakabasa ka lang ng hindi mo nagustuhan sa Facebook, hindi naman para sa iyo. Nagreact ka kaagad. Huwag reactive ka pa din. May narinig ka lang hindi naman ikaw yung react agad. Don't be a storm chaser. Amen. So on the on the contrary, what is a builder? A builder or builders, they are responsive, they are God focused, and they are learners. So if if the storm chaser are reactors and reactives, the builders and the others on the other end, they are responsive. So what's a response? What 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 do you mean when you say responsive people? Response is different from react because a response is you first explore in your mind the possible outcomes. You don't react right away. You think. Think before you react. It says here, you may weigh the pros and cons and consider what would be best for yourself and others in the situations. Responses are thought of. Ito yung pag may nabasa ka sa Facebook, isipin mo, ako ba yan? Hindi din naman ako yan eh. Hindi ko nag-react agad. Hindi naman pala ikaw yun. Huwag kang patula. Patul ng patul. Amen po ba? Because a resilient person knows what battle to fight. Amen. So, um, God-focused. We're also God-focused because they're understanding that God is in control as we always say so they don't have to worry. Hindi naman sa wala silang pakialam eh. But, their trust in God is just so much that they don't get affected by all those things. Because, yes, problems, they're real. But God is also real. And God is more real than my problems. That's how the builders think. They are learners. They understand that this is a situation that is calling me to grow. Amen? Hindi yung emote ka lagi, buhay mo MMK lagi, yung palagi kang makakaawa, no? You'll never go if you think that way. And I love this quote that I have read from Zig Ziglar. It says here, If you learn from defeat, you haven't really lost. 
let that sink in. If you learn from defeat, you haven't really lost. Let me just say this in Tagalog para mas mag-sink in. Kung natuto naman ako dun sa failures ko, walang nawala sa akin. But on the other way, if you're not learning from failures, you keep on losing. A resilient person always learns. Tell the person next to you, learn. Amen? Which is leading me to the next the next point it says here be a learner not a quitter tell the person next to you don't be a quitter amen so let's read what the word of the lord has to say to us in the verse here it says here and have you forgotten his encouraging words spoken to you and his children as his children he said my child don't underestimate the value of the discipline and training of the lord god or get depressed when he has to correct you for the lord's training of your life is evidence of his faithful love and when he draws you to himself it proves you are his delightful child let that once again sink in be a learner not a quitter there are people that are not going to be able to do it. They are not going to be able to do God is telling you here, my child, don't underestimate the value of the discipline and training of the Lord God. Don't be depressed. Amen. Don't be depressed. You're always going to be able Grow up. Amen. So, because there are different ways on how we are how how we are responding to to tests to to adversities let me just show you here it says here these are the ways how we are actually respond when we are tested first we underestimate what do we mean by that we diminish and ignore the value of the, of the discipline we rationalize things i remember the moment you give out reasons, you don't want to grow. The moment you always justify and reason out, you just don't want to grow. Stop giving reasons. Start giving results. Don't reason out. Don't be a reasonite. <laughs> Amen. And some people, they get depressed. They just quit. Because their emotions cannot handle it. They're just too emotional. They, they become angry. They blame others. They cry, they pity party no way. But a resilient person, he learns. He embraces God's training by facing facts, taking responsibility, and changing. When you are corrected, just change. Don't rationalize. Don't reason out. That's what resilient people do. They bounce back. They don't have time for emote, emote. Amen. Because even though we know that for a fact, when you are being disciplined, it's it's not it's not really fun, amen. So let's see what God has to say to that, to us about that. It says here, in Hebrews twelve five to six. Now all discipline seems to be more pain than pleasure at the time, yet later it will produce a transformation of character, bringing a harvest of righteousness and peace to those who yield to it. I would agree when you are being disciplined not just through corrections when you're being disciplined through situations it's not pleasurable but you don't underestimate it you learn from it because you will harvest from it it will make you a better person it will make you a better Christian it will make you more more of the of to become the person that God really wanted you to be amen so don't spare yourself from experiencing all these discipline because this will make you more tenacious more resilient amen if you're prideful you will see learning as a, as a failure as opposed to an opportunity for growth and change in order to have a transformation of faith and character we must change our attitude about learning and lastly let me close with this so that we can be resilient it says here, be prayerful through failure. When you are at the point of failure, be more prayerful. Because here we can see 
in Luke 22, 31-32, it says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat, but I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. Amen. After Peter experienced a spiritual failure, Jesus encourages him. It's one of the many stories of resilience in the Bible that give to us a blueprint for handling discouragement and setbacks today. Are you discouraged? Pray. Are you failing? Pray. Are you are you being tested? Pray. Because you know what? I love this. I love this. Um, statement that I have read. And let me share that to you. Failure is only fatal when it is absent of faith. It's so difficult to fail when you are out of faith. But when you fail and you have faith, you don't stay fallen. You bounce back because you are resilient. What are the other things that we can learn and we have to be reminded of? Always remember, friends, that we are fighting a spiritual battle. That there will really be attacks. It's not going to be an easy life. There's always an attack coming from the enemy. That's why when you think like you are falling down, just have a resilient heart to bounce back. Tell the person next to you, bounce back. And also remember that prayer is how we keep and strengthen our faith. We can spend a lot of time thinking, talking, and feeling sad instead of praying to God. Prayer strengthens our faith. So don't underestimate the value of prayer. And lastly, when we change, we help others to change. We can use everything we go through to help strengthen others as well. Faith is what gives us that ability to take anything in life, including our humbling failures, and turn them into experiences that drives us to love God, to love others. I hope you have learned something on on what God has taught us today about resilience, the power to bounce back, the power to stand up even how hard the fall is. Let's all be praying. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because indeed your word is alive. Your word is indeed powerful, Lord. Thank you for ministering to us tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because it is your your love, Lord. It is you, Lord Jesus, who is teaching us how to be resilient and and reminding us how to be resilient, God. That, Lord, no matter how difficult the situations may be, Lord, we have to stand up again. Father, thank you for reminding us, Lord, that we have to be glad, Lord, even though there are lots of troubles, God, because, Lord, these things, Lord Jesus, will help us grow. Lord, even open our eyes to see things the way how you see them, God. May we not see, Lord Jesus, failure, Lord, as detrimental. May we see, Lord Jesus, failure, Lord God, as a way, Lord Jesus, of of you, Lord. This is your way for, for us to grow even more. Father, even I pray for strength upon those people who are going through a very tough situation right now. For all those who are sick, I pray, Lord Jesus, you minister to them through this word. To all those who have who are who are who are losing their jobs, Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, that they may find strength in your word, Lord. To those, Lord God, who are experiencing family problems, Lord, I pray that they may find strength in your word, that they may find, Lord Jesus, that grace to be resilient, to bounce back. And Father, I release, Lord Jesus, that that spirit, Lord God, the spirit of resilience to be upon us, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that we will not stop loving you, Lord. We will not stop doing, Lord Jesus, what you have called us to do no matter how tough the situations may be. Thank you, Father, for your goodness upon our lives. Infuse us with your strength. Infuse us with your love, Lord, so that, God, we can glorify you more. Thank you, Father. You are our strength. You are our source of life. You are our source of joy. We honor you, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Continue to be resilient. 
continue to stand strong continue to, to run their days for the lord have a blessed day god bless you all